I'd like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Are you interested in participating in a quilt along, but you just have no idea where to begin? Or maybe you made the decision to join, but you just don't know what the next step is. Or maybe you want to start one, but you're afraid that it's gonna end up as a UFO in the back of your closet. Today, I'll go through the planning stages of a quilt along, what you need to do before you cut, so that you give yourself the best possible start to get you to that finish line. So stick with me and I'll show you how to do it. Hi there, I'm Karen Brown of Just Get It Done Quilts. I give you tips, tricks, and strategies to help you make the quilt that you want to make. And if you like what you see, please hit that subscribe button. We have all seen the thumbnails on social media announcing the next quilt along. Pattern, the fabric, the prizes. It's such an exciting step in making a quilt and you can't wait to get started. But if you don't take the time to prepare, they can easily turn into a wombat, a waste of money, batting, and time. The good news is with a little planning, they can be amazing events that push your skills and color zones and introduce you to a new global pack of quilters. So if you saw my interview with Gnome Angel, then you know that I'm jumping on board for this year's 100 Days, 100 Blocks Kinship Fusion Quilt Along. And there's some exciting developments to share. So join me as I get ready. So the first step in joining a quilt along is understanding the value. What's in it for you? And there might be two parts to this. There's the surface part. You're attracted to the pattern, you're attracted to the designer, and the excitement of working on a new project with new fabrics, or joining your friends in a common project. But think a bit deeper. Is this the opportunity to challenge you with a new skill? Or practicing a quilting technique that you're not that confident in? Maybe you want to experiment on a new color palette or use up some scraps. Maybe you're craving a new connection in the quilting community. Or maybe you just want to sit back and follow the leadership that a quilt along provides. Since there's a set pattern and a set time, you can put yourself on autopilot and find solace from all the other stresses in your life. Knowing this value will give you direction in the weeks ahead. And when the going gets tough, it's also your check-in point to get you back on track. Your brain needs space to plan, so take the time to tidy up your space. Finish up the projects that you're working on and put your unused fabric away. And then organize your scraps if they're in the way. If you were on board with my decluttering challenge back in January, then you'll know how empowering a clean space can be. If you're not sure on how to declutter and organize your sewing space, I have already started a series and I'll leave a link in the notes below. I know this sounds obvious, but you want to sign up as soon as possible. Then read the welcome email. The host of the Quilt Along wants you to succeed, so they have provided you with links to important information, like where to purchase the pattern. Then take a moment to purchase it. And where can you find the frequently asked questions? If the Quilt Along has run before, the organizer has accumulated a list of questions that participants regularly ask. So if you have a question, check here first. What are the hashtags to use for posting? Then add them to your follow list. The important dates. Then take a moment to put these dates in your calendar. When the tutorials, if any, will be published. And if there are prizes, what the rules for those prizes are. Download the I'm in thumbnail and post it to your social media to tell the community that you're on board. Read the pattern completely. I know this sounds like another no-brainer, but often we skim through the pattern without reading the details. Not only does the pattern tell you how many fabrics you need and how much, and the additional fabric needed for the backing and the binding. It should show what fabrics go where. Any concerns about directional fabrics? If there are size options, trust me, options are good. A tool list. Sometimes you need specific tools, Sometimes they're only suggestions for ease of construction, or maybe you have a similar tool that can do the same job. Reading through the instructions will let you know which is which and give you some time to do the research to figure out if it's right for you. 
And if you need it, you'll want to buy it now before it's out of stock. Construction. How is it going to be made? Regular piecing, applique, paper piecing, or maybe all three. Once you understand the method, then you'll know whether you have the skills. So will the quilt along have the tutorials to help you or are you going to need outside help? And the last thing is pattern storage. Like how are you actually going to use your pattern? Will you keep it on your tablet or your computer and just refer to it there? Or are you going to buy a hard copy or download a copy? Will it be kept in a file folder or a binder or just with a paper clip? If the pattern uses templates, where are you going to store those? But choose the pattern organizational system that's best for you. Now for the most delightful step in the whole quilt along, the fabric pull. This is both one of my favorite steps and one of the most stressful as I tend to overthink it. Picking fabric that is good for you starts a feedback loop in your brain that makes you feel amazing. So give yourself time to enjoy yourself here. Don't be rushed. Note the fabrics and the colors that bring you joy. And take lots of pictures of the different fabric poles because they look very different through the lens of a camera. If your quilt along happens annually, you can also check out social media and see past participants quilts for inspiration. Alternatively, you can look at other sampler quilts to get ideas on different color pathways. And exciting news for this year's 100 Days 100 Blocks, Gnome Angel has teamed up with Prequilt so that you can use kinship coloring sheets online and you can play and play and play. And they have coloring pages for all the new layouts too. Just go to their website they've got a new video on how to do it, plus how to get the add-on block library. Gnome Angel is also known for her amazing fussy cutting, and you can be sure that it will be a big part of this year's Quilt Along too. If this is something that you might like to do, be sure to include designs at the scale of your block sizes and make yourself some templates so that you can test drive your fabrics. See my video, 10 sewing hacks with templates, if you want to learn how to make a set of your own. And if you're having difficulty with color harmony, check out my color series in the notes below. I also have a great video on playing with your fabrics that can also help in the color selection process. Often, you can leave out layout decisions until the end. But here are a number of things to think about before you start. Are you going to rainbow your quilt? That is, will you have blocks that wash across your quilt in a rainbow of colors? Or are you going to use value to put more weight on the bottom of the quilt or around the edges? If you are wanting to fussy cut some of your blocks, where are you going to put them in the quilt to highlight your work? Or maybe you just want to spotlight a few blocks by having a contrasting color, saturation, and value. Are there filler blocks or borders that you will need to make after the quilt along is over? What do you need to do now to make them more harmonious later? And of course, you can lay out the blocks in a totally different way than the pattern suggests. Keeping these points in mind before assembling will make all the effort worth it and make the final assembly so much easier. Ask me how I know. The make or break part of any quilt along is the pace. We're always excited to start only to fall behind after a couple of weeks or months as the rest of your life gets in the way. So now is the time to get out your calendar and figure out how you're going to fit it all in. Not all days are equal. So when is the best time to get your piecing in? For 100 days, 100 blocks, Gnome Angel recommends focusing on seven blocks per week rather than one per day. That way you can get ahead when you can for those days that you can't fit any sewing in. Personally, I like to cut a week's worth of fabric on Sunday and use my 30 minute timer first thing in the morning to get the daily block done. And new this year, Gnome Angel has new layouts for those quilters that can't commit to 100 blocks or those that leave early. The important thing is to do what's right for you and your schedule. Next to playing with fabrics, 
The next favorite thing is posting your photos online. The 100 Days 100 Blocks community is so fun and empowering. They appreciate your efforts and empathize with your challenges. And the team spirit will encourage your growth into new techniques and color harmonies. So you want to take a moment before you begin to create a style or layout that identifies you as you. So for those that are following the hashtags, they can recognize you as your posts go by. Again, take a look at what participants have done in past years. See what works and see what doesn't. Then think about your space and how you can make them distinctly yours. I am hoping to up my photography game this year, so I'm turning to Skillshare for help. Photographing my quilts and blocks is something I always forget to do, so my photos are always rushed. So this month, I am looking through the Skillshare class catalog to find some pointers to make my blocks look their best. Skillshare offers creative and curious people thousands of inspiring classes on illustration, design, content creation, and more. Skillshare classes include a combination of video lessons and a class project, and most are designed to be completed in 60 minutes a day or less, so they fit into the short blocks of time in your day. Skillshare is also incredibly affordable, especially when compared to in-person classes and workshops. An annual subscription is less than $10 a month. Turn this time into an opportunity to explore new skills and deepen existing passions. Take a look at their class list what you find might just surprise and inspire you. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description below will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium so that you can explore your creativity. And think about what platforms you'll be posting to. If it's Facebook, make sure you join the Facebook group now and create a list of hashtags that you're going to use to paste into your posts so that you don't need to type them every single time. And consider using a scheduler like Canva or Planoly so you don't need to remember to post every day. If you're interested in coming along for the ride for the 100 day 100 blocks challenge, I'll leave links and information in the notes below. And I will be doing a YouTube live stream with Prequilt next week on all their exciting features on how to color your quilt. Last Monday, I had Bernina Jeff on Karen's Quilt Circle and we were talking all about sewing machines. It was a great chat and you don't wanna miss it. I'll leave a link in the notes below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell beside the subscribe button so that YouTube will notify you when I make new videos. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest at Just Get It Done Quilts. And of course, my website at JustGetItDoneQuilts.com. So take care and I'll see you next time.